Have you ever heard the tragedy of the RE-7B? I thought not. It's not a story that Rockstar would tell you. Don't worry, this isn't going to get your girlfriend killed and you burned alive or anything like that. It's a much safer tragedy as far as we're concerned. But it is a tragedy and we shall relate it here. Once upon a time, Rockstar introduced a car to GTA Online as part of their Cunning Stunts update. It was called the RE7B, which is a pretty nondescript name, until you realize that the car in real life that this car was based on was called the 787B. It was built by Mazda and they used it to win the 24 Hours of Le Mans. And the way they did this was they built a car that wasn't quite as fast as every other car that was out on racing the 24 Hours of Le Mans, but it was so much more reliable that it didn't need to be fixed as often, so therefore it ended up finishing the race in first place. No one else could catch up with it because they were in the pits too much. Don't get me wrong, it was an extremely fast car. And the next year, this is in real life, of course, they changed the rules to specify a specific engine for that class. The, 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 the Group C class went away. And so essentially the car was banned and couldn't be used anymore. There's an irony to that, which you'll get to see shortly. When Rockstar introduced the RE7B, it was the fastest car in the game by far. If you were racing, you had to have one. They would, it, would, it had a top speed well in excess of anything else that was out there. And it could handle like nothing. I mean, there's there nothing else that could even come close to its handling. It could take most turns at full speed without any kind of problem. And after a while, People started to migrate to this because, you know, first you had to save the money up. It was the most expensive car in the game as well, or at least close to it, at over two million in-game dollars. And eventually, even yours truly, who had been racing with a, an Entity XF based on a Conaseg car that really should have had more top speed if it was going to be anything related to what's in real life, I finally bought one on sale for, I believe it was 1.8, 1.7, something like that. And then, of course, once you bring put all the upgrades into it, you're, you're well over $2 million. I don't know if it would hit 3 but it was well over $2 million. Which means this is a car that if you want to buy a shark card and then buy, it was a $50 car. It takes that much real-life money to get enough money to build an RE7B. Two, I think it was two days after, maybe three days after I bought this car, they nerfed it. And for those of you who don't know what nerfing means, that means making it less dangerous, making it more like, you know, a soft, something made of soft foam, like the nerf toys. Like a nerf gun is not the same as a real gun, and please don't ever get the two mixed up because it won't end well. What they said was that there was a glitch that was causing the car to have an exceptionally high top speed and they fixed that glitch and brought the car into this realm of GTA Online where apparently supercars can only do 120 miles an hour or so, 130 if you're really fast. I'm still not sure what the logic is on that. I'm assuming that they've played the game and if you, just like in real life, if you're going 180 miles an hour on anything but a racetrack, you're going to hit something. And they said, well, we can't just have people blowing up everywhere because they won't have any fun. So we'll make it less realistic and slow all the cars down to a safe pace. Something that people with normal reflexes can handle. This still wasn't too bad a thing, though, because although I only got to experience the super high speeds of the car for, I don't know, maybe three races, because, you know, how, how much racing can you do in, like, a couple of days unless you're really dedicating yourself to it? According to the racing sage Bruffy1322, who does tremendous amounts of research into the qualities of all cars, and if you're not subscribed to him, you really should be, the car was still the fastest thing around a track. It did not have the highest top speed, but its handling around the corners was still so exquisite that you could maintain more speed throughout the track, and therefore uh, you, could, you could just do things that other cars couldn't do. 
and it was still reasonably dominant. Now it had some weaknesses. It had its low speed traction was very low, but its high speed traction was very high because instead of having the kind of magical, what you know, called traction uh, sort of thing associated with this, what they call traction associated with cars, where basically around any corner a car would grip X amount and have so much you know friction, and therefore it could corner you know at certain speeds, this car's cornering ability would increase with with speed, which is m more reasonable, actually, because it, 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 you're using a, a quality that they call downforce, which is actually how spoilers work. If you put a spoiler on a car, it doesn't help you below a certain speed. It does, not, doesn't do, do anything. Whereas most of the cars in this game, you put a spoiler on them, hey, at three miles an hour, it's got more traction. That's not really how it works. So the downforce cars, that were mostly introduced for during the Cunning Stunts update and a few afterwards, all had this downforce quality, and they had a certain number where, as they increased speed, they would as they went faster, they would get more ability to go around corners, which is you know, it rewards you for being daring, taking the corners as fast as you can. And with the RE7B, you could really take them very fast, many many corners. If it's a sweeping corner, you didn't have to lift, you didn't have to do anything, but just turn and turn as much as you want because it had all the grip in the world. Now just recently with the gun running update, because obviously this would have a lot to do with running guns, Rockstar has reduced the amount of traction enhancement that you get from downforce. Which means that all of the downforce related cars, which would be the RE7B and of course the ETR1, the Tyrus, the Omnis, uh, the GP1, I think there's a bunch of them. The Itali GTB Custom. All of these cars now no longer have as much handling prowess as they once did, which means they are all slower. How much slower? Well, the RE7B has gone from being the fastest car in the game to being the 11th fastest supercar. And 11 is a great number, especially if you're a fan of Danielle. It takes it almost just out of the realm of, of competitiveness. Around Bruffy's course, it's two seconds slower out of a minute or so. And that's kind of a lot. Now, I don't know if this car is still going to be competitive. I haven't, you know, raced it as I'm recording this. You may be watching me race it as you hear this, because I'm still trying to build the video. I figured in this particular case, I wanted to do the commentary first. But what we have here is we have a car that I paid two million dollars plus for. I don't remember if there was a shark card associated with it. I don't buy a lot of shark cards. But now it's gone from being where I've paid a lot of money to have the most competitive car and it's no longer the most competitive car. And they didn't just do this by making a faster car that you could get. They did it by taking the stats away from my car. And if they had just taken the stats away from my car, that might not be as bad as what they've done, because what they have done is introduced another car called the Wagner, which, <laughs> isn't this funny, costs a million and a half dollars base price, which is a little less than an RE7B, but has almost all the handling prowess of the RE7B. It can go around corners like gangbusters, per Brophy 1322. And it has a higher top speed of a blazing 126 miles an hour because, ooh, you wouldn't want to get much past 130 because that would just be ridiculous. Doesn't could possibly happen. But still, 126 puts it as the sixth fastest supercar in terms of top speed and the second fastest supercar in terms of lap times. And when you say the second fastest, the first fastest is, is the Tempesta and it's I believe a tenth or something, a tenth of a second faster. The Zentorno, which is thankfully only $700,000, 
is just that same amount behind it. So the, the top three cars are all very close. And normally you would think, wow, this is really great. You know, we can now, it's, it's, it's done better class balance. There's more than one car that could be out there. And I'm standing there thinking, yeah, but if you had just introduced the Wagner, then you would still have that. I mean, you know, the, the RE7B wasn't dominant at the top. It was, again, about the same pace as the Wagner or the Tempesta. Not by much more. You didn't have to nerf the heck out of the RE7B and make it basically useless and then introduce another car that has, as was described by Brophy, as being like an RE7B with more speed. So all the people who are used to driving the RE7B are going to want the Wagner and yet, as one who drives the RE7B, I don't want the Wagner because I resent the Wagner. They've destroyed the RE7B so that I could want the Wagner and spend millions of dollars on the Wagner. And I'm just not inclined right now to give it to them. Now, will I buy it eventually? Who knows? Maybe if I'm really wealthy at some point, I couldn't buy it right now in game. I've got what? I think less than $500,000 because I've got my bunker and I, I don't even have an MOC yet. I mean, I, there's other things I have to spend money on. And the quick way of solving that is, of course, say, well, here's $100. Give me $8 million and you're, you're all set and you can get whatever you want. But, you know, that's kind of a really warped business practice there. I mean, you know, to say, oh, well, here, spend your money on this car and then use that for a while. And, oh, well, we're going to make that one slower. And now you can spend your money on this car because, that, you know, I guess you could say, well, you could imagine that the cars are wearing out. What's, what's the logic behind here? Yes, well, in real racing, you don't use the same car for 10 years. So you're going to just, you're just going to make sure you buy the next car and throw that one away because that's how real racing is. I guess there's some logic to that, but as a consumer of a digital thing that I don't expect to wear out, uh, this is really annoying, and I don't know I don't know exactly what I'm going to race going forward. I think I have to race a bunch of different things of what I already have. You know, I have my uh, my T20 that I've I've put together in homage to the McLaren P1 used in the to in Top Gear and in the Grand Tour. I've got my Zentorno, and the Zentorno is probably my best choice if I could learn to drive it properly. That has been kitted out to look like Richard Hammond's Sesto Elemento from, from that series from Top Gear. And I hate to do that because I really should put the off-road tires in that, which will ruin the look. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be racing. But here's my, real, my one concern. Let's say I plunk down another two million dollars and get a Wagner. Okay, w right now, what's the? Where are the dangers? Where are the? Let's do a risk assessment on the Wagner. Number one, there's another car coming out. Uh, multiple cars coming out that could be faster. There's at least one more supercar that's still in the tunables that we that they're going to release at some point, and they'll probably wait until everybody's bought Wagners and then say, "Oh, look, this was just a little bit faster." Nobody knows what that car is going to do. Maybe they won't make it faster. We don't know. It's a risk. The other risk is at some point, you you buy yourself a Wagner. Let's say you sell your RE7B and buy a Wagner. Somewhere down the line, they could just change the game physics again, and now the RE7B will be faster, and the Wagner will be slower, and then you'll have to sell your Wagner, save up some more money, and buy back your RE7B. Or even... Let's just say that it, you, you don't sell your RE7B. You've got too much sentimental attachment. I'll never sell my RE7B. But you buy a Wagner. Now you race with the Wagner for a while, and then they change the game physics again, and then something else is, is the fastest thing. So you have to buy that. They, they introduce a new car. It's, this, it's a constant sort of thing to try and get people to really uh, use shark cards or play the game constantly. And they, they gain either way there. They gain if you're playing on the, the servers, because they have active servers and everybody's happy and they're like, ooh, look how popular the game is. And they really gain if you're spending money. And, and that's, you know, which don't get me wrong, I'm not a communist. I think it's okay to get people to spend money. And if they want to make the Wagner just a little bit faster than everything else, I think that's a reasonable thing. You know, if you could, I don't, I'm not one who's saying, hey, look, you have to make sure that my car is competitive forever, but taking away from what it was so I can't have the same experience. You know, this is a car I've gotten used to driving. I've driven, I don't know how many races. To say hundreds would probably be a safe bet. 
with this car and it's what I'm used to. This is what I'm, when I get in this car, this is what I'm used to having a certain feel to it. So now I have to relearn the feel of the car if I want to continue to use it. And if not, if I'm using other cars, I have to relearn those. So my effectiveness as a driver in these races has been reduced. And that's, you know, I would much rather have had my old RE7B and race a Wagner that was faster and then hope that my skill with the RE7B would be more than enough to compensate the, for someone else's lack of skill with their Wagner. They, or Wagner, probably Wagner. Wagner, Wagner. People are using both terms. It's just, like, this is just not the way to handle this Rockstar. And I don't know what to do. If, if, if they increase the, the downforce without changing anything else, and put the RE7B back to where it was, apparently the Wagner would be so dominant, it would be, it would be pointless. The, the Wagner would be doing sub-one-minute runs on Bruffy's track, and this is, you know... But that would still, I think, be better... I'd rather have a car that's so dominant I couldn't quite catch that car. While I still have the experience of my car, like I, could, I still think no matter how fast that Wagner is, if I'm really good with my RE7B, I should be able to catch it. Only now, now I'm gonna have to relearn everything and see how fast I can adjust to the new car and see what happens. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna race with. I'm gonna race with the number 11, as it were. Here, we get the 11th fastest car, and then see if it's still competitive. And I'm going to do some of that. I've got to put that thing back on the track and then see how it how it runs. Maybe you'll be seeing some of that as you hear this. But it's annoying. And this is this is the tail. This is the tail of the RE7B. It was once the fastest car in the world. Now it's 11th on the on the rankings. And ironically, it's just three or four ranks up from the Entity XF. Which is, which, which is parked next to it in my garage, which is what I used to run, which used to be the fastest car in the game, and is now 15th. I guess it's the same story told over and over again. This is the tragedy of the RE7B. On that note, this is the Black Knight. Have a great night. And try not to force choke your girlfriend, okay? It won't end well. Where the heck is Sturgis? You got to be kidding me. Are you serious? If it's not one thing, it's another. Well, gotta run. Okay, so I guess I guess we just have a cow on the roof now. That's like a thing. <laughs>